today's video, we're going to be going through my new loadout on my new bug out bag. So recently, me, a couple of buddies of mine, we went out hiking for a day and I took this new bag. Total weight on that day trip was 30 pounds. And Kansas Prepper asked me if I would do a loadout video. So this one's for you. Before we get into the bag, understand this is what I consider a hybrid theory bag. There's a lot of bug out bags that people pack stuff in them, pack them full, put them in the closets. And then the day they go to need it, that thing weighs 80 plus pounds. And so instead of having a bug out bag and a hiking bag and a camping bag, my bug out bag is all those things mixed in one. It's a bag that if I need to leave my house for a couple of days, I can grab it, put it in the car, or even walk and be fine. It's a camping bag, which means if a buddy called me up right now and said, hey, let's go camping, I grab one bag, I'm out the door, I go camping. And it's also a hiking bag. And that keeps my weight to a minimum. The first time I did 26 miles on the Foothills Trail, my bag weighed probably 60 plus pounds. Because I did that, 26 miles with a 60 pound pack, I know that sucks. Half that crap I didn't even need. So first off, let's talk about the pack. The reason that I went with an Osprey pack is three reasons. Number one, they make freaking awesome packs. There's been thousands of people who have done long trips with Osprey packs, so they've held the test of time. Number two, they're lightweight. ILB packs are great. People in the military hate ruck marches. It's because the pack itself weighs 10 plus pounds. So you add another 30, 40 pounds of gear into it, you got a 50 plus pound pack. This pack weighs three and a half pounds, nice and lightweight, and can still haul a pretty decent load. And number three, Osprey has a lifetime warranty on their stuff. So if you actually take your gear out, and you go out here and you ruck march with it, and you test it, and you tear it up, you rip it, you destroy your bag, that's fine. Give Osprey a call, they'll send you a new one. With that, you're able to actually go out and test your gear more often. On the outside, I have two water bottles. This is a rollable, foldable canteen. It clips right here. The other one is a essentials water bottle. It goes right here in this sleeve. This bag is set up for a hydration bladder, which stays technically on the outside of the pack. In the brain portion of the bag, I keep all of my essential items that I need to get to quick. Items that I don't want to dig around if I need them. Med kit, Luco tape, tourniquet, and more toilet paper. These are items that if I need to get to them, I want them to be right at my head. I can unzip it. I can reach in there. I can grab it. Within 10 seconds, I can have it in my hand. You don't want to be fumbling around when you need toilet paper. You really don't want to be fumbling around if you need a tourniquet. On this side pocket right here is all of my cooking supplies. UCO switch, my fuel canister pot holder, a little bit of Germex, my Stanley cup. I have a gas canister stove, one of the green cups, a book of matches, a lighter, the BRS 3000 stove, and a thing of hot lips. Depending on what I'm doing, depends on what I keep in the pockets. If I'm camping, I keep my Nightcore NU25 in this pocket. If I'm hiking, the Nightcore comes out because normally I'm not hiking at night and snacks go in my pocket. Over here on this pocket, my water filter, which is the Hydro Blue VersaFlow. Got many videos about that. And this is the three liter Noc Vecto water bag. We'll go with the outside first and then work our way in. BioLite Sunlight. As you can tell, the solar panel is facing outward, so that way if I am hiking, if I am walking in the sun, it can catch some sunlight. One thing I like about this bag, it's got zippers on the side. This side will allow you quick access to the inside of the bag, while this side gives you a hideaway storage pocket. This pocket on the outside is extendable, so you can put a whole bunch of stuff in here and tie it down. It is kind of bungeed and so it keeps everything secure. On the outside, my Mora companion knife, my drink mix, keep it on the outside, quick and easy to get to if I need a little boost of energy. 
baby wipes, and a little pocket microfiber towel. The reason it's on the outside is because if I wipe down my shelter, then I can easily hang it right here, let it dry out throughout the day. Toothbrush, toothpaste, camp soap, lip balm. Keep this on the outside because it's probably going to be one of the last things I do before I leave camp and I don't want to dig through my bag trying to find it and dig back through my bag trying to put it up. Bug spray because, you know, you need bug spray. We'll move down to the bottom. This pack does offer tie down straps right here. It does allow you to extend it. It does have hoops that you can hang, axes on, ice picks, whatever. It also offers a rain cover and a zipper compartment right here down at the bottom. Pull it out. Unfortunately, it is lime green. Down here in the sleeping bag compartment, I keep all of my shelter stuff. Outdoor Vitals hammock, Outdoor Vitals tarp, and my pillow and my seat. This bag features a nice zippered storage compartment on the inside of the brain. I keep a few miscellaneous type items in here. Spare lighter. Some aluminum foil. A spare water filter. You never know when yours is going to break. You never know when you're going to lose it. They only weigh two ounces. Have a spare. My battery bank. A backup headlamp, which is the Nightcore NU32, and the charging cable. Now this is where a lot of preppers are going to start freaking out. My fire kit is that. I don't need a thousand ways to start a fire in this bag. If it is a true bug out, I probably don't even want to build a fire. I have a way to cook my fuel canister stove. That's going to last me three meals a day for approximately six to seven days. I have a way to stay warm. You'll see it later. Why do I need to build a fire? To keep the boogers away? Fire is going to give off my position. Now, I have a way to build a fire. Don't get me wrong, but I don't need to build a fire. I have one lighter with my fuel canister stove. I have a book of matches. I've got another lighter in here. I have a ferro rod. This ferro rod is not going to last me to the end of my life. It'll last me a couple thousand strikes which is more than enough that I need. I have a book of stormproof matches. Not waterproof, stormproof. The ones that you can dip in water, pull out and shake and they come back on. In here, it came with a little bit of fat wood so I can break that up and get a fire going. I have Pyro Putty and I also have Germex. That's three ways of getting the fire going if the stuff's not dry. My food bag. There's like five or six days worth of food in here. Waterproof container, so I can throw it over a tree. Some paracord. Spare freaking clothes. Don't go to bed wet. If you go to bed wet, you will probably freeze. You will probably die, especially if you're in cold weather. Have a change of clothes. Spare socks. I have spare underwear. I have a spare shirt, and I have a pair of shorts. Now, I know there's a ton of people out here who think they're going to be walking around in multicam and camoed out come bug out time. But the truth is, especially down here where I live, you would sweat to death before you got to your location. Have a pair of shorts. Keeps you a lot cooler. Yeah, your pigment will, will set you off. But dude, you're walking around with an 80 pound pack. It's going to set you off anyway. Now, the bulk of my bag. A Outdoor Vitals Top Quilt. This sleeping bag, essentially, weighs two and a half pounds. That's nothing in the relative scheme of things. That's two and a half pounds for a zero degree bag. Understand exposure is going to kill most of you. So you go out in the middle of Kansas, North Dakota, South Dakota, with nothing more than a Mylar blanket, you're going to die. With my tarp and my sleeping bag, I can set a shelter up in a minute, a minute and a half, and be nice and warm while you're still cutting branches for your first layer. Before you even get your frame built, I can be nice and toasty. If it is a bug out situation, don't make your life worse than it has to be. You don't have to spend six to eight hours on building a shelter that might get you halfway by, 
when you can carry your shelter, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it adds a couple extra pounds, and I can be up off the ground, nice and dry, nice and warm, in about two minutes. Think smarter, not harder, guys. For where I live, could I take that out and add something like a Mylar sleeping bag or a UST survival blanket? Absolutely, I could. This has kept me warm throughout 30 degree nights, and I slept fine in it, but I like to be nice and toasty. I'm going with toasty, sleeping good, versus this, sleeping like crap, and my next day suffering. So that right there was the hiking slash camping portion of that bag. Total base weight, not counting food, water, 15 pounds. And that's give or take a pound. If it is a bug out, taking my solar panel, because it's awesome. Taking extra food, and I'm taking this red kit. Inside this red kit, I have a few spare items, like extra phone chargers, spare full tang knife, some winter weight gloves, a couple mouse traps, a couple fishing kits, a spare USB-C adapter, some yo-yo traps and more fishing kits. Now, it's not a full-blown fishing, hunting, trapping kit. It's enough stuff where if I need, oh, a catch a squirrel or catch a fish to get me through that extra day, I can do it. The Lixida biomass stove. Eventually, my fuel canister is going to run out. Yes, absolutely. But this will never run out because it is biomass. Instead of building a massive fire, keep it small, keep it pourable. Like two minutes later, this thing's cooled off enough to throw back in the bag. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh man, you're missing this, you're missing that. You, you don't have an axe, you don't have a saw, you don't have X, Y, and Z. No, because I take my gear out, I test it. A bug out is nothing more than a camping trip that you didn't want to take. So the question is, can I go out and survive for multiple days with this bag? Yes, I can, it wouldn't be that hard, but it's a camping trip. I can be up off the ground, I can be dry, and I can be warm in about two and a half minutes. If my clothes get wet, I have a pair of clothes to change into. If I get hungry, I have food to cook. I have a way to cook. I also have ways to trap and fish if needed. If I come up to a water source, I have ways to filter water and I have ways to carry said water. Remember, a bug out bag is an evacuation bag. You should have some place to go. If your idea is to go out and spend the rest of your life in the woods and in the tree line, best of luck to you you're going to need an 80 pound bag. This bag, on foot, I can actually carry it multiple miles. Many people cannot say the same thing. This bag is lightweight enough where if I need to add guns, if I need to add ammo, if I need to add X, Y, and Z to it, I can. So the way that you drop weight from your bug out bag or your get home bag is by taking everything and laying it out and weighing it. Figure out how much your bag weighs completely empty. Figure out all them clothes that you're carrying around. That axe, that saw, that thousand piece fire kit that you don't need. Weigh everything. And when you get the weights, break it down in categories. By weighing out all of your gear, you figure out whether you need that gear or not. Or can you trim it down? Do I need an axe that weighs seven pounds when I can get away with a two pound hatchet or a one pound saw? Do I even need that when I can get a four ounce Mora and it does the same job? And the reason you want a lightweight bag is for when you do have to add in your guns, your ammo, all your knife collection. You don't want a 50 pound bag and then add in 30 pounds of weapon and ammo and have an 80 pound bag. If you have a 30 pound bag and you add in 30 pounds worth of arms and ammunition, it's only 60 pounds. It's still kind of manageable. And I know there's a lot of Super troopers out here that, well, back in my day, I used to grow up with 80 pounds. Yeah, that was 30 plus years ago. Your knees aren't the same. Your back's not the same. Do you remember how much fun you were having back when you were rucking with 80 pounds? Yeah, add 20 years on top of it. Keep your bags light, test your gear. All right, guys, hope you've enjoyed this video. If there's anything I should add, throw it down in the comments section. If you've done the Titan 10 mile challenge and you've taken your bag and you've actually tested it, let me know in the comment section. All right, guys, hope you had a good day. KP, again, this one's for you. Go check out his channel. It will be in the description as well.
Alright guys, that's all I got for today. T2 out.